This tutorial is all about techniques for creating levitating objects in photography and methods for processing them in Photoshop. Technique number one, magic chair. We need a location, a chair, and a tripod. Switch the focus to manual mode, maximum zoom of the object. Now sharpen and pull back to the desired composition. Take a few shots of the model and then remove everything from the frame and take a shot of the background. A little later we will merge the two images. You can also take a shot of the background before you start working with the model. When you're working in the studio, it doesn't matter. But in the field, the sun doesn't stand still and the nature of the lighting can change quickly. Watch out for clouds if you are filming in sunlight. The model should be shot with the same light as the background. If suddenly the cloud closes the sun, you have to wait a little while, just a few minutes, and the cloud goes away. And then you continue shooting in the same light. Example number two. Pick a location, pick a model, put the camera on a tripod. Let's go. For a kid, it's a lot of fun. And for you and me, it's an exercise. Try not to particularly overlap the baby with your hands, just to get rid of the extra work of removing your hands in Photoshop. We take two photos. The first one is the model with the support. The second picture is the background. Here's another idea. Use an unusual camera position. Do you think this guy here was shot as he was falling? Not at all. He was walking on an inclined plane. This is my first Photoshop work, and it's probably older than you are. The model and I were able to achieve a very natural sense of flight with her posture. She was standing on a stool, holding a broom in her hands. And then we just flipped the shot 90 degrees, and her falling hair turned out very well flying in the wind. In this shot, the models were shot standing on the floor, and the pointing feet were shot separately and combined in Photoshop. There are other ways, for example, tying the model to the ceiling with a rope or making them jump on the mats. Shooting on a green background will allow you to easily compose several images into one, without the effort of cutting out the model from the background. Open Adobe Bridge. Let's select a few images, including the background and create a template with the settings and then batch process photos. They were all in RAW format. Press Enter, which will automatically open the Photoshop Camera RAW module. Increase the exposure, reduce the contrast. Light tones down, shadows up, blacks up a little bit. And we have a pretty contrasty picture with detailed shadows. Let's go to the tab Presets, where you can create your own presets. I already have a lot of those here. And to create a new one, click on the blank icon. Type the name of the preset and click OK. To apply the created preset in a batch, just select all the photos you want to apply the preset to and click on the preset name. Done. Open the photo with the background and drag the photo with the model on top of it. We have two layers, let's drop the opacity to half and check how well the layers match up. We see that it is not accurate enough. Our shooting was done directly by pressing the button with the finger, which provoked a slight shift. In addition, the tripod was standing on the sand and it may have fallen through, it was not stable enough. It is best to use the remote control. Click V on the keyboard to activate the move tool, and use the up and down arrows on the keyboard to adjust the top image to match the bottom image. The next step is to click on the layer mask icon. The mask is white. That's why we use the black brush to paint over all unwanted elements to hide under the mask. The dangling massive cape turned out to be absolutely useless here. Let's transform it into a short cape. Let's merge the layers. Select the top layer and Control e we are going to use Filter Liquify to fix the plasticity of the cape and shadows, then frame the image. Although, you know, it looks better this way. The processing of the second example is the same as the first. But shooting against a green background is a different story. In a nutshell, you shoot the model against a green background, and the background has to be lit with a steady light. Now we frame the shot, just to get rid of unnecessary fragments. 
We were shooting on the beach and sand got on the background. And that's what we're going to fix now. A little trick. I'll take a pipette sample of the background color and paint over the defects. Also, the background looks more like yellow in the photo. We fix it by using the hue and saturation palette. Let's select the yellow color, the color we are going to correct, and move the vertebrae to the right to get a saturated green color. Using the lasso, let's select the fragment of the model. For example, the most difficult area where the hair overlays the green background. And then we cut out the model literally in one click. How to do it? With the help of a special program called Easy Green Screen Pro. The program has a full version and a free version with a picture size limited to 1200 pixels. So you can just try it first. We got it cut out nicely, but we're going to perfect it. The most embarrassing mistake that gives away a very inexperienced amateur is the green reflections from the background along the contour of the model. This program automatically bleaches all the contours and reflections and simply replaces them with a neutral gray color and creates a series of layers. Let's select the image layer with the mask and hide the remaining sand and other defects under the mask. And also with a white brush on the mask we bring back the lost elements of the shoes. Shoes were so shiny that the reflected color was taken as the background color and removed by the program. The second popular mistake is a jagged outline. Control click on the layer mask to load the selection. Select the tool quick selection and click on refine edges. The top slider smooths the geometry of the line. You can also blur the edges within two pixels. And the third important slider, shift edges. Increasing the value, you expand the area of the picture and vice versa, which is what we need. We make the edges smaller and thus eliminate all the junk and irregularities in the outline. Perfect. Let's drag the model to the picture with the background and position it. Now we create a realistic shadow, but first let's analyze the background lighting. The shadow of the lantern pole falls on the brick wall and it's a bit blurry. This means that the shadow from the model should have similar characteristics. Right-click. Select Blending Options in the Drop Shadow tab we can adjust the shadow settings. With the mouse you can grab and drag the shadow and put it where you want it. Slider size will blur the contour, opacity will be set to around 30%. To separate the shadow of the object into a separate layer, right-click on the shadow effect and choose from the drop-down menu Create Layer, then click OK. The shadow is separated from the model and we can freely transform it like a normal layer and adjust the color. And finally, let's try a different background. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And most importantly, love each other. The rest is not important. Bye.